What's up, everyone? So a little while ago, I asked, what fighters from Street Fighter do you want to see make a playable comeback? And I totally agree with every single one of you. I enjoy Street Fighter V, and yeah, it has a big roster, but there's this empty feeling when your favorite fighters aren't in it. You know what I mean, you get this itch. Oh man, why isn't my guy in there? As much as I like Street Fighter V, I hope these fighters make a comeback in the next main series Street Fighter. Starting off with the earliest fighters introduced. So, number one, Retsu. You're probably aware of him. In the original Street Fighter, he's your first opponent. According to Street Fighter Wiki, he's been excommunicated from his temple for using forbidden techniques. I want the next game to expand on that. What forbidden techniques? Has he redeemed himself? I'm a sucker for a redemption story. Plus, it's established that he has a friendship with Ryu and Goken. Yeah, I want to say that. Come on, bring Retsu in the spotlight and get some fighters from the original game into the forefront. For Street Fighter 2, Fei Long. Alright, the roster of Street Fighter 2, they've made a lot of reappearances. And Fei Long, I want to see the most. I mean, he's modeled after Bruce Lee. Enough said. Moving on to Street Fighter Alpha, Rose. I love Rose. Her elegant soul power techniques make her stand out. And story-wise, I think it would be interesting to see what Rose does after Bison dies. At the end of the Shadow Falls story in Street Fighter V, Bison is dead. So what does Rose think? What does she do now? Her purpose to defeat Bison is over. I want the next game to explore that. Also, I like her theme music in the first Street Fighter Alpha, but bring back her Street Fighter 3 theme, Scala. I love that song. It's one of my favorites in the game. And another reason to have Rose back... She's the only Italian fighter. Come on, represent. Guy. I was slightly bummed he's not in Street Fighter V. We do have his teacher, Zeku, and I love Zeku. I want to see Guy's journey in Bushin Ryu in its next chapter. Sodom. The first boss fight in Final Fight, the original Final Fight, Sodom is established to be a weeaboo. He is obsessed with Japan, even to the point where he always dresses like a samurai. I want to see him interact with the other characters, especially the Japanese ones. Maybe they find him annoying, or they like him, I don't know. And in his ending of Street Fighter Alpha 3, we thought he died. He drove a truck onto M. Bison's base to the point of explosion, but he survived. In Abigail's ending in Street Fighter 5, he's making a phone call to him. What's Sodom doing now? I want to see that. Maki. She made her debut in Final Fight 2, and her Street Fighter debut in Street Fighter Alpha 3 on handhelds. Her signature weapons? Two Tanfa. In a way, she is similar to Eagle in the original Street Fighter, and if I had to choose between Eagle and Maki, it's Maki. She has her ties to Guy and Cody, so I want to see her interact with them again. Okay, Street Fighter 3. We've seen fighters from Street Fighter 2 and Street Fighter Alpha make plenty of comebacks, but 3 is so underutilized. A few characters do make reappearances, but the other characters bring them back to the spotlight too. Starting off, Sean. I like Sean. A pupil of Ken's, Sean implements Ken's moves while making his own. He can do a Hadouken-like move and a Shoryuken-like technique, but he's got his own moves. One move where he grabs you and then punches you in the ground, and he can throw basketballs at you. <laughs> I just like that little detail. His sister Laura made it to Street Fighter V, and I like Laura, but you gotta give me Sean. Dudley. He was in Super Street Fighter IV, and I wanna play as him again, I like Dudley. There is no one else who can make boxing look classier. He's a perfect opposite to Balrog. Balrog is this brutish, angry, aggressive boxer who will kill you in the ring. Dudley will spar with you, likely compliment you, and you'll be good friends. I like seeing the rival cutscene in Super Street Fighter 4 when Dudley's going, Oh, you have no manners. Or in other words, you have no dignity. Bring Dudley back. Necro. One of the more cartoonish fighters in Street Fighter 3, which, in a way, Street Fighter 3 is the zaniest of all the games, but that's what I like about it. Necro has this elastic body, so like dolls him, but much faster. He also has electrical powers. And he's in a relationship, he has a girlfriend. Necro is a cool character, and super underrated. Elena. Elena has one of the brightest personalities, easy to be friends with, loves people, and... I want to see her again. I like Elena. And in Street Fighter 3, she's one of the best animated characters. That idol animation of hers where she's just doing that light dance in front of her opponent. Subtle way of expressing her personality. Ordo. The one-armed, 140-year-old hermit is 
One of the best in Street Fighter 3 in my opinion. I can never tell what's going on in his mind. He seems so zany and wise all at once. I love pulling off that move in Street Fighter 3 where Ordo grabs his opponent by the leg and swings him back and forth like Man Ray did to Patrick. Do more with him, please. He was in Dalsum's story in Street Fighter 5. That's a start. It's just, I gotta play as him again. Who knows what else he can do? Makoto. My favorite fighter in the game. Makoto is short, but crazy strong. She is a heavily disciplined karate student, always striving to improve herself. She always looks stern and serious, and that's what makes her stand out from everybody else, especially with female fighters. Plus, I love her ultimate move, Seichu's on Godanzuki. Remy. This guy is probably the most forgettable character in the game. I'm not sure if he's a fan favorite, he's not that popular, so that's why I want him back. Do more with him. He is one of the most anime-esque fighters. He's got the moody personality, a tragic backstory. Do more with that. Also, I want the next Street Fighter to take place after 3. Maybe Capcom wants 3 to be the definitive end. Gil's ending kind of makes it so, but... Gil's ending could be a what-if scenario, like Bison's was in Street Fighter Alpha 3. Okay, Street Fighter 4. Abel. Abel is my favorite Street Fighter. Period. I love this guy. He's one of those amnesia characters, so he doesn't know his past, he's looking for answers. But that's not all there is. Abel is an easygoing guy. He's easy to talk to. He's a big martial arts movie fan, like when he met Fei Long. Oh, dude, I gotta fight you. I'm a huge fan. And he loves animals. That's my, that's my favorite part about him. His cutscenes in Super Street Fighter 4, he finds a stray puppy and adopts him. And in Street Fighter 5, that puppy is his avatar on social media. And I have to acknowledge that cutscene in Street Fighter Cross Tekken. He and Gael find Heihachi and his bear Kuma. And Abel is going... If we win the fight, we take the bear. And Guy's going, are you for real? And Abel's so innocently saying, I want to pet it, you know. I love that moment. I also love his melee and grab heavy moveset. You can do a chain on your opponents to the point where you can grab them and throw them behind you. If an opponent jumps or they're doing an, an attack from the air, you can grab them and throw them in the opposite side. I was annoyed how Street Fighter V teased him in the story. They got an Abel model, so bring him back as a full-fledged fighter. Crimson Viper. One of the more technical fighters, if you catch my drift. She does have combat training, but she relies on her suit, which is a killer one. Her gloves can emit electric shocks, her boots can use fire, and she can make small earthquakes. Being a government agent, she's always spying on the next criminal organization. She was in a few cutscenes of Street Fighter V, and a cameo is good, it's just... I don't want to play as her again. El Fuerte. You heard me gush about him in Fighters I Want in Smash Ultimate, so this is more likely. Street Fighter 4 is so far the only game where El Fuerte is playable. Well, that I know of. Maybe he's in uh, some side Capcom crossover that I don't, I don't know about. Let's get back to El Fuerte's vast adventures in cooking horribly. Who knows, maybe he'll get better at cooking. That'd be something. Somebody has a passion, they want to do it, they pursue it, they're not doing great at first, but in time, they get better. That would make him so relatable. Go, Ken. Despite being Ryu and Ken's teacher, he never felt like a Ryu and Ken clone. Akuma is basically a super-powered clone. I mean, I like Akuma, don't get me wrong. Go, Ken's moveset is different. His Shoryuken in Tetsumaki Senpukiyaku is reversed. So his Shoryuken is a kick that, that springs upward. And his Tetsumaki Senpukiyaku is a sliding punch. It helps make him feel refreshing. His chargeable Hadouken, like, I loved pulling that off. My only gripe is that his ultra combos are a copy paste of Ryu Super Arts in Street Fighter 3. The Shin Shoryuken, the Denjin Hadouken. I'm sure Capcom can make new ultra combos for him. Also, I want him to spend more time with Ken. In Street Fighter 5, he's hanging with Ryu when he meets Rashid, so do more with Ken. I want these two to interact more. Hakan. Hakan is probably conceptually the most creative street fighter, oil wrestling. He's a Turkish oil wrestler. And this game was, I think it was the introduction to that concept for a lot of people. He's always carrying a barrel of oil with him. He dumps it on himself and he's ready to go. He's sliding on his opponents, tackling them, grabbing them, and he has the funniest ultra combos. One, he holds you, 
squirts you out, and while you're in the air, he catches you, swings you around his body, and then launches you to the to the other side. But the second one, you slip on him, he latches onto you, and he shoots you out like a like a gun shooting a bullet. And there's a brief moment when you see the opposing fighter sliding, looking uncomfortable. Yeah. And then they hit the other side. <laughs> it's at his best when using fighters who have their eyes pop out of their sockets. Plus, he has a friendship with E. Honda. Maybe he also knows other fighters. Oni. Yeah, we already have Akuma. Oni is Akuma fully under the influence of the Satsui no Hado. He is this blue demon with Super Saiyan-like hair. I loved playing as him in Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition. My only problem is so irrelevant to the story. The story doesn't do anything with Oni. We have filler cutscenes when he smashes a tree or a volcano. That's it. I guess there are victory quotes whenever he fights other characters. It's just weird that Oni has no consequences. In Street Fighter 5 and Street Fighter 3, Akuma looks fine by Akuma standards. Oni didn't make that much of a permanent impact on him. Did it change his body? Did it change his mind? What did Oni do to Akuma internally? We don't know. Nothing happens. I want a new game to do something about that. And finally, DiCapri. At first glance, we thought she was a Kami clone, but DiCapri is more than that. A dark mirror of Kami. Kami's story in Street Fighter 2 and Street Fighter Alpha 3, she's haunted by Bison. You are a clone. You are a part of me. You can never escape. And Kami learns to get away from that. Be her own person. DiCapri isn't like that. She's always in pain. She thinks there is no escape. This is what you are. You are a cold-blooded machine. And Kami... Kami tries to help with that. She does feel sympathy for her. And we want DiCapri to escape from this. In Street Fighter V, we do see her getting better. Kami does display a lot of concern for her. Even to the point where she teams up with Jury briefly. And she hates Jury. So do more with DiCapri's character. I want to play as her again. I want to see where her character will go from here after the Shadowfall story in Street Fighter V. So those are the fighters I want to see make a comeback. Again, who do you want to be playable again? Please comment below. Thanks for listening. Till next time.